Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the fight of the century. We've got another double trouble. I want a good, clean fight today, gentlemen. So let's start it off with Mr. Nuclear Revenge. Let me tell you about Tack. Freshman year, this weird kid attached to me. Everyone picked on him or avoided him. He had few actual friends. There was something not quite right about him. Tack randomly thought we were dating, and I felt so bad for him that I just sort of rolled with it. I honestly felt bad for him at the time. I needed to figure out how to let him down nicely. However, it started to affect my social life. The other kids started picking on me because of his weird behavior. Tack was a nickname he gave for himself because he loved tacking or sticking finished puzzles onto a board and saving them as art pieces. He was very clingy and possessive, and would tell the other students as we walked down the hall, This is my girlfriend! She's my girlfriend, everyone! In class, we shared he would be super creepy. Like, I was doing a presentation, and the teacher was clearly impressed. So he kept going on and on to her that I was his girlfriend. Right there, during the polite clapping from the students after any presentation. It was so awkward. He'd kiss my hand and smell my hair and call me weird hours crying. I ended up meeting someone I actually liked and told him politely it was over. Tack lost his crap, calling me names in the hallway at school, writing me mean letters and telling anyone who'd listen that I'm evil and a player and nobody should like me. Kindergartner crap, but it wore me down at around junior year. Other kids were bullying me too because of it. It got so bad I couldn't go to school without the constant bullcrap from students who thought it was funny. Constant suicide comments directed at me. This is what hit me the worst. I lost my ever-loving mind, employing my cousin. I had her tell him she was planning to get everyone in school to give her things, insulting me so that she can post it on her live journal. It would serve as a way to prove everyone hates me and that I should kill myself. He was overjoyed and spent all night filling a shoebox with hateful letters, artwork of me as the devil, even cringy hand-drawn comics of me as the villain of his plot, poems of how I should kill myself by name. I had evidence I was told I needed if I wanted him to stop. I had to prove he was dangerous and not just a pain in my ass. I took the box to the police, the school, and my parents, crying that he's stalking me and leaving these things in my lockers. I tell them I am scared for my life and demand help. He was confronted with the evidence and had a breakdown right there in the office. Started whimpering that I am the literal devil and how nobody ever punishes me for the crap I do. That I always get my way and it's not fair. He tries to turn in my cousin, who was quickly cleared because they had no evidence against her. He was arrested. Charges were filed. He was given court order therapy and put in a program where he had to sit with a special ed teacher at any public events or lunch to watch him from acting out. At one point, Tech wrote me a note during lunchtime and tried to give it to me. But his teacher slash babysitter grabbed the note, read it, and told him to go to the office. She never told me what was in it. The fact I didn't see him again for a month tells me it must have been something juicy. Senior year, he was still crazy as ever. He asked a girl I knew if she'd go to a dance with him. And she said, No, I heard what you did to me. Please don't talk to me. Tack started screaming he was going to blow up the school. Another arrest. When it was time for college, Tack's mom refused to send him. She said he needed to be watched. She wouldn't even let him have a job, even after graduation, as rules for living in her house. He was still on probation and clearly didn't know how to act in public. She micromanaged him into his mid-30s because of it. We ran into each other around that time, and he got weird again. Said he thought I cursed him. I joked that if I cursed him, I wouldn't have gone for him. I would have aimed for his family. Because it's no fun if the victim dies early. I thought I was kidding back, except he wasn't joking. Not long after, his long ailing grandma passed. He instantly exploded, saying I must have laid that curse down and that I'm evil. He blamed me for not being allowed to continue his education. He blamed me for being a virgin into his late 20s. He blamed me for not having friends. 
It was madness. I heard through mutual friends that he had lost his mind, and everyone was terrified he was going to hurt myself or someone else. I moved away, only for my friend to get a message from a stranger's Facebook page saying, tell me to never come back to hometown again. There's more, but this story spans a long time, and I don't have all day to type this out. Oh, what a good, clean showing from our friend in the nuclear corner. Now can Pro Revenge find a way to fight back? He said he was going to ruin my reputation. I destroyed his life. Because the law's involved, I'm going to be super vague about some details. I went on a gap year from university. When I came back, I needed to find some flatmates. There were three guys from campus that I didn't know, and this other guy, Dave, who was doing the same degree. Dave is probably 10 years older than me. Dave said he knew the other guys, and they were cool. And everyone I talked to in positions of authority said Dave was a great person. Dave had been renting an apartment for two years, and his landlord had recently bought the Cease estate. He transferred them onto that lease, and we moved in together. Dave was not a great housemate, but it wasn't anything too serious. Until the exam period. If things in the house weren't exactly how he wanted them, he would get angry. At the same time, he would not do dishes, and he would take up the most space in the kitchen and bathroom with his stuff that nobody was allowed to touch. The rest of us started to become friends, and we would eat together every night. At 6-ish, Bill would come home and start prepping for dinner. Then a bit later, Kevin Pete would come home and help. I would join them, and we would eat and chat, then go to bed. After exams, Dave started partying and coming home drunk. Then, he stopped leaving the house, but continued to drink. He started being angry over little things, like making noise after 8 p.m., who was eating his food, no one was, all he ate was bacon, my housemates are Muslim, and I ate what they made. Especially towards Kev, for some reason. One second, he would love Kev, and the next, he would hate him. Dave lost his job a few days later. We felt bad, and he was struggling to pay rent, so we started making him dinner. I'm a bad cook, so it was mostly the other boys, and they even made him an extra portion for lunch. The guys wanted to try something new. It required a blender. Dave walked in and accused the guys of using his blender. Remember, they are making him dinner. Also, it wasn't his. Kev turns on the blender while he is talking, and Dave snaps. Dave starts yelling and grabs Kev by the neck and pushes him outside. Our landlord begged us to give him a week because he had been perfect for the previous two years and she knew him through church. I said, if he was still a problem in five days, all four of us were leaving. Worrying about losing the four of us, she agreed. We went to the police and they took a statement, but said it wasn't violent enough for him to get arrested. The next day, we sat him down and told him to stop drinking. I knew what was going to happen, so I made a plan. I was going to get him out. He got angry, but let us pour his whiskey down the sink. He was literally shaking with rage as I poured. He was still sneaking drinks and was getting angry. The other boys are Asian, and me and Dave are white. So of course he starts being racist. He started saying Kev was a dickhead for being disrespectful about the blender, and so was justified in being aggressive. Every time he got pissed off, I would call him out. I told him I was going to take the past of least effort to get him out of the house. After five days, I called the landlord and said that Dave had to go. The landlord said Dave could move back to his original apartment. He saw this as a challenge to his dominance, or something equally as stupid, and said that it was his house. I made it clear to him that I had told the landlord he was still drinking. Then, he started threatening me, and he said he was going to ruin my life at home and uni. I set up a camera after he passed out from the vodka he wasn't drinking. Now, it was a waiting game. The next day, he started. I wasn't scared because he had been drunk every day for two weeks. He could barely walk, so when I got home, he walked into the kitchen and started. I laughed at him. He got more annoyed. He let out a slew of abuse. I basically told him how much I hated him. I'm a white immigrant who moved here when I was a baby, so you can't actually tell. So he started comparing me to them, the other housemates, like they were lesser and now I was lesser. 
Then he started challenging me to fight him. When I told him I wasn't going to hit him, he told me that all the people of my background were tough. I was like, okay. Then he hit me. I deflected it. I'm not particularly big or strong, but he was super drunk, so it wasn't hard for me to dodge his punches. Bill came to see what was happening, so I called the police. That was a mistake. While I was distracted, Dave hit me in the face. The police came, and I was completely fine, so they couldn't arrest him for assault. Apparently it's a civil matter, but I could get a restraining order the next morning. He came out to taunt me after the cops left, because he was still in his house. Pro revenge time. I got a restraining order. He isn't allowed with 500 meters of me or my uni. Basically, I spend most of my time in the field. Our field research center is at a public dock, and Dave used to work at a mechanic there. He also picked up seasonal work at a few other places in the dock, like refueling and engine work. All the other unis have their field centers at the same dock. So basically, he was banned from everywhere. So I took great joy in sending and emailing to all the companies in the dock, informing them that if he showed up there, he's in violation of the order. As part of the degree, we can get a two special license, and there is a mechanic requirement. So I informed them of his drinking, and he was put under medical review and had his license stripped from him, and is unable to attain a second license. The best bit was he checked out equipment for personal use, which means he has to pay for it. He took it for a spin with our housemate Bill and asked him to pay him back, which is technically an illegal charter operation. I got Bill to write everything down and send it to the relevant authority. So now he's under investigation for illegal charter operation. Also, the dates of his partying line up with his equipment rental and there are pictures of him drinking before and after he checked out the equipment. He has nowhere to live, so he is sleeping in his car. He has been kicked out of uni. He has to go to court for both assaults and the restraining order. He has to go to court for running illegal charters and operation under the influence. He can't ever finish his degree, and he can't get any of the seasonal work he was counting on. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, the polls are up now. Pick your favorite and let's see who wins today's episode of Double Trouble. Alrighty, guys, you know the drill by now. If you somehow managed to stand the sound of my voice and you like the stories, maybe consider subscribing. And if you really, really liked it, maybe give it a like and a share. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.